Well, welcome again to our lesson preview for um, this new week coming. And uh, we're going to be talking this week about the end time deceptions. And uh, so far we've been uh, studying uh, about uh, death and dying and uh, future hope uh, is the theme for this uh, quarter. And we've been talking a lot about the soul and the immortality of the soul. And some brush it off and say it's not important, but we know that this is going to be vital uh, in these last days to study and learn more about. And so as we embark on this week's uh, lesson, we welcome uh, you here and uh, we thank you for coming and we think of those that are online and if you get to view the study, uh, pray carefully that you will understand and that the Holy Spirit may impress you. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for the beautiful study that we have for this coming week as you teach us about how to defend ourselves against the lies that are out there about the immortality of the soul and how you want to have us know that there's only one death uh, for those uh, who are righteous, when Jesus comes, he will awaken us to new life in Christ. And then the second death is for the, the, those that have been wicked and remain and are dead now, but they're raised to eternal damnation. So bless us as we open your word, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So now, like as we said, we uh, continue our studies and this week's lesson is entitled End Time Deceptions. End Time Deceptions. And I need to tell you that our world has accepted uh, manifestations of the supernatural. They just have. And I'm sure that some of you may know someone who has uh, mentioned communicating with the dead, uh, like a dead relative, uh, or even participating in a seance. You know, those meetings where they call up the dead. Or even uh, playing with uh, the Ouija board. You know, it's like a spirit board. Even as a child, you may remember that. And in certain bookstores right here in the USA, we can find books with mystical themes. Or we can even get uh, those tarot cards, they call them, T-A-R-O-T cards, that are used by fortune tellers to gain insight into someone's past, even the present, and also in the future. So when, when, when these are combined, these things we're talking about, when they're combined with popular media, which portrays souls or communication with the dead in shows and in movies uh, on a regular basis when we see these things advertised, playing in theaters. It is not surprising that such manifestations of spiritism have become normal. People believe that these things are around. Well, we should also mention that in this study for this week, that mysticism, mysticism, accounts uh, of near-death experiences, belief in reincarnation, necromancy, ancestor worship, and spiritism all contribute to the normalization of such things in our society and to the confusion about the afterlife. When we look at all these things, and when people tell us about these things, speaking to the dead, reincarnation, these are all things that suggest there is life after death. But let me tell you something today, friends, that God takes anything that has to do with spiritism or spiritualism very, very seriously. And the Bible warns us in extremely strong language against 
such practices because they are the deceptions of Satan. That's what it is. But let us not forget, these deceptions have been around for a long, long time. In Old Testament times, in the time of Christ, and into the New Testament era, and way beyond, these things are around, has been around and studied. So the question is for us, should we be concerned about it today? And why? Well, the answer is in the title of the study of this week's lesson, The End Time Deceptions. It's part of what is going to happen and is happening now that we are living in the time of the end. Satan is mustering up his forces and spreading the lies that he used in the garden with Adam and Eve and all through the ages. And he's, he's intensifying his lies in these last days, spreading confusion about death, dying, and immortality of the soul. And guess what? You and I and every human being on this planet is in the midst of the great controversy between good and evil, between truth and lies. And so, we see in our memory text here, 2 Corinthians 11, 14 and 15, it says, And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. And this is one of the great deceptions of the devil. This is one of his last trump cards that he's going to pull. You see? He's going to become a shining being, an angel of light, and he's going to pretend to be the Christ that has come. And people are now being groomed and set up for that during these studies. So that is why we are studying these end time deceptions. So, in the end, in the end, it's going to, 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 to be about truth and falsehoods. That's what the end is going to come to that. It's going to be about what is truth, right? And so that is the question. That is the question. I'm asking you, what would you say truth is? What is truth? What is truth? Well, I, I looked it up. And you can too. In the Oxford Dictionary, I went to the Webster's Dictionary to find out what is truth. What is the meaning of the word truth? And there are lots of things to say. But what I, what I gleaned from some of it, it, it says truth is the real thing. The real thing. Okay, the real thing, the original thing, that's truth. Another one said, truth is accuracy of representation. In other words, what you're showing me is, is, is the real thing. You, you are, it's accurate in who you are, what you say you are. Are you the real deal? Are you the truth? Another one said, conformity to fact or reality. If somebody sticks to the facts and telling the truth in courts of law, remember before the witness speaks, before even anyone speaks, they have to raise their hand. Will you tell the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. They raise their hand and say, I will. Because the judge wants the truth. 
The people wants the truth. Right? The jury wants the truth. And sad to say, people raise their hands and they don't tell the truth many times. So what is truth? Well, in other words, truth is a person who is truthful, shall I say, is, is not a liar. So that's the opposite of truth. A person who is truthful is, is, is not an imposter. Is not a counterfeiter. He's, he or she is not a pretender to be something that they are not. It's, it's not a deceiver. Those things that are truth is not. Right? That's what it is, friends. And so, uh, as, we, as we begin, as we begin, we want to, want to talk just a little more about this true thing. We want to talk about this true thing. Because the demons, the demons of, of the evil one, their business is to deceive and to bring lies. So, uh, deceptions are usually uh, uh, inspired by demons, is what our lesson says. And so we're going to be looking at that. But many people believe, many people believe this. What you believe, they say, is true for you. Hmm. They say, your truth is what you think truth is. And they say, as long as one believes in the person or the deity, you know, the power, they can engage in all kinds of deeds and acts, and it will be accepted. Even if they have no regard for obedience, to, to his word, or, or, or no regard to his doctrine, or his teachings. Just believe. And then you, you can do as you like. Oh, oh, now nah, that's something, right? So, is that really true? Let's go to Matthew chapter 7 and look at what Jesus himself said. Jesus said this. He said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Why? Many will say to this, to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? And then I will say, I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So what is it saying to us? Yeah, Jesus himself. Someone may prophesy. They may cast out demons. They may perform miracles. However, God might reject them. Why? Because they are not doing his will. That's where it comes down to. Therefore, it's important to understand God's will. That's what it is. It's important to understand God's will. God's will does not depend on what we think. That's where the problem lies. God is not interested in what we think, what is true and what is right. No, 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 no. Is what, what God thinks and says it's true and right is what matters. Is what matters. So, truth is considered something relative in today's society. They say the truth, you know, and make such a big deal, a big deal about it. Like we said earlier on there. It's what you believe is true to you. No, 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 that's not so. Truth is considered today, like we said, it's something relative in, the, in today's society. If it were relative, though, if it were relative, we would use 
our thoughts, our interests, and our feelings to determine God's will. Can we do that? No. The Bible doesn't teach this. God's will doesn't depend on what we think. He just said it earlier in the, on the slide. God's will does not depend on what we think. Okay. So, Matthew 7, verse 24, 25. Therefore, Jesus speaking, Jesus says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. That's what Jesus said. You, you, you cannot just make up these things and, or think that you were right, but you must know, you must know the person. What's the person's desire? And Jesus said, you must be like a person uh, that, that, that built his house on, on the solid rock, built on the Bible, built on Scripture, built on the truth. Why? And verse 25 says, because when the rain came, descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on the house that you built, it did not fall, for it was founded on a rock. That's what Jesus is saying. Rather build on truth. And what he was really saying is, I am the rock. I am that rock. If you build on me, you will take my words, and you're obedient to my words, and my teachings, and my doctrines, you will not fall. You will be strong because what's ahead of you, the devil is ready to deceive. And especially in this one area we, we're going to talk about. The devil is going about like a roaring lion in another place, the Bible says. They're ready to destroy, but if you build on a rock, the solid rock, you will survive. The rain will come. Evil will come. The demons will come and try to, 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 to influence you, but they will not do it because you have your sound and solid doctrine. So now, the other thing that we need to talk about now, life after death. Life after death. Some people try to prove life after death scientifically. They, they say, well, it's not, we know it's not quite right. But anyway, we can prove it scientifically. And what they're talking about is uh, they, they use this near-death experiences. The, the, the NDEs, near-death experiences, they use that to prove their point that, that, uh, that death, you know, is the scientific thing that there's life after death. And so they come to you with that. Uh, and in those experiences, they tell you, uh, people uh, who experience clinical death, uh, they, after they died, uh, not a, a really a death where you are dead, but they die, but they're not quite dead. They still breathe. They still, they're just unconscious. They're in this deep unconsciousness, they say. You know, that's what they say. They, and while they're in that state, they, they, uh, in that death-like state, they saw things. They saw things. They, something like a giant, uh, like a light like a light that's shining there. And they see a celestial being in their, this, their thought patterns in this death state. They see it. You see? They see a dead relative, perhaps, before coming back to life. But notice something that, that they didn't actually die. We're talking about death, like you dead when... Uh, a train knocks you over, you're in a car crash, you die instantly. You're dead. They say, well, I had this near-death experience. And I really, man, I felt I was really, you know, I was gone. Or people who drown. They fall in, they drown. They're there for half an hour, then they get pulled out, lifeless. But then they become revived, resuscitated. And then they say, oh, man, when I was in that state, I saw, I saw things. And I can tell you. So this, just like this person is saying here, saw things, heard voices. But the truth is, they didn't actually die. They just went through 
uh, this, this sensorial experience of the dying process, but not an experience after death. They, they never died a real death. It wasn't. It wasn't a real death. That's for sure, right? And so, and so uh, the Bible is very clear. Uh, the on, and the, uh, the only time we know that is when Jesus returns. Because the Bible clearly states that we will see God's face only when he will awake us. And, and the text is right here. This is what David the psalmist said. In Psalm 17, verse 15, David said, As for me, I will see your faith in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. So that's clear. The Bible states that we will see God's face only when he will awake us from death at his second coming. That's when it will happen. Not this near death, just kind of make believe that you were dead. No. If you die normally of a sickness, of an illness, or by an accident, you are dead, you are buried, and the next thing you will hear when he returns, then you will ascend before him. So now, the other thing that uh, that is out there of these uh, experiences, these uh, uh, deceptions that the evil one has, is the, the subject of reincarnation. Reincarnation. So what does reincarnation mean? Reincarnation. Well, the, uh, you know, uh, reincarnation means that People live several lives in order to become better in each one until they're good enough to enter a state worthy of living in paradise. They say when you die, you actually uh, uh, go into the stages to get better, to get better and better until you are ready and the gates of heaven opens up and now you can be ushered in. So if you're a bad person, that's where you go. The Catholic faith teaches purgatory. You go into purgatory after death, and there you linger, you get prayed for, your, your sins are forgiven there, and so forth, and then you're ready to go into heaven, into the gates. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's not true. Because if you believe this doctrine, this doctrine makes the doctrine of resurrection and victory over death unnecessary. Unnecessary. 1 Corinthians 15. I'm not going to read it, but you can look it up this week when you study this lesson. If you believe this doctrine, it replaces salvation by grace with salvation by works. If you, if, if you can be reincarnated, hey, what, what else do you need? You can do it. This doctrine makes the second coming useless. Why would Jesus want to come back for somebody who can themselves get their, their, their sins forgiven while they're waiting somewhere? And then you don't need him anymore. You don't need his coming anymore. And besides that, number four, it means that we can make decisions after death. No, that is contrary to the Bible. Totally contrary to the Bible. Last week we handled, and the week before, when you die, you sleep, you know nothing. You're dead. And you wait for the resurrection morning. So there's no uh, reincarnation. But this is believed, oh, by so many, many people. Many people. You know, reincarnation. The Hindus, they believe that the eternal soul goes through a progression of consciousness, or the, as they call it, samsara. In six classes of life, yeah, your body goes in when you die, goes through six classes of life. It says aquatics, then plants, also in reptiles. Uh, the, 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 the soul or, or, your, or the body goes into insects. It can go into birds, animals, and human beings, including the, the residents of heaven. That's what they believe. And that is why when you see, when you go to India, to these places, 
especially to, to Calcutta, in, in the, into Delhi, into Sri Lanka, you'll go to the marketplace and you'll see these, these, especially the white cow, the white cow is very revered by, by, by these people. And they believe that their dead uncle or their dad, dad or their brother or, or, their, or their mom, when, when they die, they, they have gone into one of these beasts. And these cows roam freely in the streets. They can come to the marketplace and to the, to the stalls of fruit and vegetable and stomp in there and, and eat whatever they want. And everybody stands away. They won't touch them. Because if you chase them or touch them, you're being disrespectful to their mom or to their dad who's in that uh, car. They've been reincarnated into the cow or the birds. In some other places, in Asian countries especially, they revere the monkey or the elephant or the serpents in the same way. The monkeys in some, in, you go to Indonesia and some of those places, those monkeys run amok. They, they jump on the roofs of the people, on the cars, they go into the houses, they eat, and they won't touch them because, hey, my, you know, they, they allow them to run rampant in, in fear of hurting or, 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 or disrespecting a deceased family member. You see? Reincarnation. Reincarnation. This is, these folks, we're talking about end time things that is real in many people's lives. Many people's lives. This is real to them. Right? And so, 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 so we know that, that uh, this is not true. And, 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 and uh, there are, are many, many people who believe in this stuff, in this stuff. Many believe. Now, we come, we come to uh, uh, an, another deception that, that is going on, that we know about even today, and it's uh, consulting the dead. It's called necromancy or necromancy. And, and also ancestor worship. So, I like this word. I, the first time I come across this word, I'd never known this word, but I'm learning all the time. I, I don't know what it means, necromancy. What, what do you know about this word? <laughs> what do you know about this word? Well, it, 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 this word, necromancy, is derived from uh, uh, the, 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 the Greeks, um, the Greek language. And, and it is a form of summoning the alleged active spirits of the dead in order to obtain knowledge. And the knowledge that they want from the dead, and it mainly, usually, about future events. What's going to happen in the future? What's going to happen in the future? That, that's what, they, what, what uh, they want to know. And that's what necromancy means. And, and, and the Bible, the Bible exposes consulting the dead through mediums or fortune tellers as a deception. And the Bible tells us that. And we know right from in the Old Testament times, such practices were prohibited in the Bible. And here, here's a few verses here. I mean, in those days, we had these people already, like I said in the opening remarks. This has been going on starting in the Garden of Eden. When, when, when the devil told Adam and Eve, you will not surely die. Your body is immortal. You will live on forever. And they bought that and look where we are today. So that's an old thing. But people still believe it today. You see? See? And so uh, in, in Leviticus 19 verse 31, this is what God told uh, Moses to watch out for. Give no regard, verse 31, give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Do not speak after them, to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. That's what the, that's what the, 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 the decree came. God said, don't, don't deal with these people. Don't go there. Don't go there. Right? And then in Leviticus 20, verse 6, oh, it says, and the person, God said, who turns to mediums and familiar spirits to prostitute himself with them, I will set my face against that person and cut him off from his people. And verse 27 goes further. 
a man or a woman who is a media or who has familiar spirits shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones and their blood shall be upon them. Whoa! So you can see that God is taking this thing seriously. The dead is dead. Don't mess with them. Those are spirits trying to tell you something else. You see? So God is serious about what he's saying here. Well, the prophet Isaiah came later on. The prophet Isaiah came later on. And this is what God was saying, speaking through the prophet Isaiah. Oh, strong words. And when they say to you, Seek those who are mediums and wizards, those who whisper and mutter. Should not a people seek God? In other words, don't you should go to God to seek something like that? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? How crazy is that? They go to the people that have died to seek uh, information. And verse 20 says, to the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Ah, that's what God is saying. There is no light in them. Hmm. You know, and so, and so, uh, one thing is to, is to hear a medium seeing that they see uh, uh, and talk to spirits of dead people. But it's a totally another thing is to actually see and hear a dead person with your own eyes. See, when these people, when you go to the mediums, they, 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 they consult the dead, but you never see the dead person. You see shadows and things like that, you see? And that's how, how, how that happens. Okay, so uh, the following, uh, well, uh, uh, you, you don't, you, you, uh, this is what I wanted to say. That, that these people that are, are dead, when you go to the mediums and the fortune tellers, you never see the real person. But you always, the, the mutterings that the verse was saying, you hear the whisperings and the mutterings, and, but it's not, it's not the real thing. It's not the person. And, and they just convey, they tell you what they are seeing. You see? And so, so following, following these, these principles, following these principles, Saul at the time, when he was reading these things, he did something that was, that was good. That, that he did something that was good. It says, let me get to that uh, verse. Uh, well, let's, let's go back. Let's, let, let me go back. Let's see. Okay. So, so yeah. Uh, you know, there, there's a, there was a, it's a true story that I want to tell you now. Just a very, very short story. But, but, uh, when you're caught up in this thing, then you know that there's, there's a serious problem because God is saying, don't go to these people because they're just telling you that, that the person that has died didn't really, all of them didn't die. There's the special part that, that is left alive. And so, uh, let's see, uh, uh, I want you to get to this slide here. Yeah. And then... Uh, Sorry, yeah, and we, and we did this. Now, uh, when Saul, when Saul, King Saul, uh, read these things and heard about it, what God had said, he actually went and he removed the mediums and the spiritus from Israel. When he heard these things, and you can read the whole story. We don't have time to read it, but you can read it in 1 Samuel chapter 28, the whole story about Saul with these mediums. Because, because when he read that, he wanted to be a good king, but knowing Saul, you know Saul's story. So it, it, all the mediums that he knew about, because they were right there in Israel, he 
took them out, and, and those spiritists, he took them out. He banned them from the, from the Israelites, right? However, it didn't last long. It didn't last long with Saul. Because Saul, later on, you read the story, when the Amalekites were going to attack him, he uh, prayed and asked God to show him what's going to happen. Can he fight them? They were much more than they. And so God didn't speak to him. God didn't come to me. He was already on the way out because he was disobedient to God. And so God never answered him. So what he did was, and you read it there, he went and he called his elders together. He said, I must know, I must know if we're going to battle. Is there something we can do? And somebody said to him, you know something? Because Samuel, the prophet Samuel had already died a few years before that incident. He was the prophet. And, 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 and he said, I've got no word from God. I need, I need to hear from Samuel. Said, but Samuel is dead. So one person said, yeah, but we can, I can, we can uh, get, there's a lady in a town called Endor. Let's go to Endor. There's a spirit person there. And she can maybe get Samuel for you from the dead. Then he can tell you what you can do. And actually he went there. <laughs> but the people knew King Saul. So he actually, it's a long story. He disguised himself. He put the wood on and he put stuff on. And he went to the lady. And she, she said, oh, why do you come? You know, we cannot be uh, there. She thought it was a, a, just a person, ordinary person. He said, tell me, can you bring up Samuel? Yes, I can bring up Samuel. But no, I don't want to be. We, told, we were told not to do those things. Don't worry, you'll be safe. He didn't say who he was. And this lady, he sat there and in a seance. Now, what is a seance? A seance is those meetings where you go into a room and they bring the dead person. And that person came up and... And he heard the voice of Samuel. In fact, he didn't even hear. The medium just told him. Saul never actually saw Samuel. And he didn't even hardly hear the voice. But the medium told him, yes, I, there's Samuel, I see Samuel. And she transmitted the message to him. Wow, man of God did that. And we know the end result was not good for him because he broke his own uh, vow to God and he went to the, to, to the spiritualist person. But there's a, a, and today it's the same thing. I know of a lady, I read about her several years ago, Seventh-day Adventist lady in New York City, uh, good people, she had lost her husband recently and so uh, she was alone by herself, but she had one, a, a companion with her, a little tiny a poodle dog, fluffy, Fluffy was the only thing she was clinging to Fluffy. And she loved this dog dearly. And day by day she got more and more. Fluffy was the only thing she had. She loved this dog. Uh, this was, uh, the, uh, only the two of them. But something happened to Fluffy. Sadly, Fluffy, Fluffy died. Fluffy passed away. I don't know how, but there was this report. So this lady was really terribly depressed. Christian lady. There, she, a friend... Uh, uh, she met a friend uh, in, in the store one day. Said, "How are you doing? Oh, I'm, doing, I'm missing my husband, but I'm missing my dog even more. Uh, my little doggy is gone. Oh, your dog is not there. Yeah. Oh, if I could just have that dog in my arms, I'd be so happy to you." And this lady said, to her, "Well, you know, there there are these people that can bring your dog back to you can you can hear your dog and see your dog. Really? Where? No, but that's that's stuff. That's evil stuff." She said, "Well, you can, you know." Just say when I can cook you up with these people. Oh, she said, no, we, that's, uh, that's not right. But she went home. But you know, she couldn't, it, after the second, third day, she said, man, can it be that wrong? Can I see my fluffy again? So she called up that place. And they said, yeah, they gave the dates. And you can look in the newspapers towards the back of, usually in the back of the newspaper. I know in, in our papers in South Africa, you look at the newspaper in the back column where it's got, they got the advertisements and stuff. You can see the times and dates where these people meet. Science meeting at this place, that place, that day, that day. And you can go there. And she did that, and she went there. She said, oh, I'm not supposed to, but I, I'll go and see him. Oh, if I can just hear my Fluffy again, if I just see him again. So she went. Seventh-day Adventist lady went. 
She came in the front door. She knocked on the, the, the address, the time, and somebody came to the door. Oh, come in, come in, come in, come in. Come in. I didn't ask anything. She went in, and the place was doomy and dark. It, you know, it's not light inside. And she, uh, the, the devil doesn't like light, as you know. He likes darkness, you know. You know and there's no light. So she went in, but it was dim light. And then there they were. And um, uh, uh, well, let, me, let, me, let me go to the, the front slide that I had. There, there it looks like that. They go, they, go, they go in, they sit around the table, this table, and your hands, all, everybody around the table, to put your hands on the table. But as she came in, the person leading the group was already saying, Hello, good evening, Mary. Come in. Oh, how did they know my name? I didn't give no name. Come in, Mary. Come sit down. Okay? And then she told the group that Mary is here to, 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 to see her dog, her doggy Fluffy. She just said that. She just said. So they, they had their chance and this and that. And then this person leading out called the spirits to bring Fluffy. Say, Mary's here to see Fluffy. And everything went quiet, went quiet. And then suddenly there were some whimperings of a dog, ah, 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 like that. She said, hey, it sounds like Fluffy. She looked, wait, 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 wait. And, and this person said, Fluffy, Fluffy, you can call Fluffy. She said, Fluffy, Fluffy. And then, yow, yow. He barked exactly like Fluffy. He was there. She said, oh, my dog, but Fluffy, is that you? F Fluffy. And he whined like he was answering, about, eh, eh, like he usually does at home. Oh, this lady couldn't believe her eyes. She looked. Wait for it. They said, just look in the front of the platform. And she just saw like a little form. They couldn't see the dog. It was like, like a vapor, like form moving there, moving there. Yo, 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 barking. Ah. And she said, Fluffy, can you hear me? Fluffy. And then when she says that, then you go, eh, eh. Well, I tell you, she left there. She was in tears. Ah, she's so fluffy. She said, but when she left, she said, but this is wrong, this is wrong. Well, long story short, she went back and back and back to hear Fluffy. And you know, she was out of the church. I don't know what happened to her finally, but that thing took her out of the church. So this is real. It's, it's happening today. People hear their dead uncle speaking. They hear their, their, their sister or their mom. They go to these seances, they call them, seance. That's what it is, you know. So let's get back, at, oh, we're almost done. And so, so, uh, 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 and, and so now, yeah, in, in, uh, uh, in Isaiah 8, verse 19 and 20, I think that's where we are, 19, it says very clearly, it says, and when they say to you, Seek those who are mediums and wizards and whispers and mutters. That's what we read already. You know, don't go there because these people don't speak according to the testimony and, and to the law. They don't do that. So, so uh, here uh, in, uh, the, in the last part now, it says stay away from these, these things when people say they see dead people. One thing is to hear a medium seeing that they see and talk to spirits of dead people. Another thing is actually to see and to hear a dead person with your own eyes. I think I told you that earlier. Remember that demons can appear in the shape of dead people and imitate them. They appear to do that. They can do that. These demons, they know us better than we know ourselves. That's what, what it is. But in a moment of weakness, we can fall. So, the last part says simply this, knowing all these things, knowing all these things, how can we defend ourselves against deception of the evil one and all the demons around us? How can we do that? What is the antidote for us living in these last days? and trying to get away from these evil things that we know is with us. It's not jokes. It's not made up. It's real. Well, there's the answer right there. Paul speaking to the Christians in, in Ephesus, Ephesians 6, 11 and 12. 
What you have to do is to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Why? Verse 12, because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. You can't see the enemy. You don't see the enemy. You see? Because the enemy is not there. But you are, you are fighting against principalities, against powers. You are fighting against the rulers of the darkness of this age. They're in the dark places of the... they spirits, evil spirits. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness. That's where the battle is in this day. Spiritual wickedness in, in the heavenly places. So you have to put the antidote, the, 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 the firepower, if you like, that we have, is, is putting on the whole armor of God. And you can read the rest of the verses. Ephesians 6, 11 through 18. And that's, that's broken down for us. Wear the belt of truth. The belt of truth. See, we must cling to the truth and reject anything against the truth. The breastplate of righteousness. We must put on the righteousness of Christ, not our righteousness. The shoes of the gospel. We must live and share the gospel of peace. Our feet takes us to people. That's why we, they call them the shoes are referring to our feet. The shield of faith we must have in the armor. We must use our faith to reject the enemy's deceptions. That's what it is. We must wear the helmet of salvation. We must always remember that the salvation of Jesus is the one that we are looking for. The salvation that Jesus has given us, we have to hang on to that. Then there comes the sword of the Spirit. And the sword of the Spirit is the scriptures, the Bible. We must study the Bible and follow the Bible's teachings. That's what we must do. And then the last thing to bind all these together is prayer. Prayer. It is our essential source of power and victory is prayer, the prayer, the prayer life. And the last thing that we do is this, a quote from Ellen White. And this is what she says. In the story of redemption, that book, page 395, she says the very name of witchcraft is now held in contempt. The claim that men can hold intercourse with evil spirits is regarded as a fable of the dark ages. But spiritualism, which numbers in its converts by the hundreds of thousands, yea, by millions, which has made its way into scientific circles, which has invaded churches and has found favor in legislative bodies and even in the courts of kings. This topic we're talking about. This mammoth deception is but a revival in a new disguise of the witchcraft condemned and prohibited, pre prohibited of old. So it comes in, in guises. To, to them, it's something nice. It's something new. You go to a seance, right? And, and all these things. You have these near-death experiences. You believe that stuff. But that is not true. That is fake. So as we study this week, come ready, prepare on Sabbath. And make your contribution. Read uh, the story of uh, Saul and what he did. And may God give us a good, good study out of this lesson this week. Thank you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for giving us your word and warning us about this evil that is around us and has been around for ages, but it's going to intensify here in these last days, Lord, because people are looking for new ways to trust and believe, and the devil is sowing this untruth to people around. He's going to uh, deceive so many already has. Millions of people believe this stuff. Help us to help others. Help us first to believe in the truth. And then help us to share with others. We pray this week in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.